Uh, good afternoon. Today is uh, June the 25th, 2020, and we are doing our uh, updates as it relates to COVID-19. Uh, also joining us today is going to be Kelly Colopy, who's the director of our health department, and of course, Paola, who is um, doing our ASL translation, and Alice uh, from the health department. And so I want to thank them, and uh, we'll go ahead and begin the update. Uh, we're going to be doing today uh, a review of the data again and how the city is doing, um, and also a review of kind of what's next um, for us uh, in, 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 the, in the days ahead here. I want to start by saying that um, as of today, we've had about 3,500 residents that have tested positive for COVID, and approximately 25, 65 of them have recovered. So, of course, people continue to recover. Uh, we've lost 123 Long Beach residents to COVID-19, uh, which is it's very sad for all of us, um, and 93 of them have been associated with long-term care facilities. Let's begin by a little bit of what the governor had mentioned today and what we have to look forward to. Uh, I think we're all aware now that um, y just yesterday, uh, the state of California has reached uh, its highest levels of COVID cases. Uh, the governor, of course, uh, mentioned that earlier today. It's something that should be alarming to us statewide, uh, certainly here in the LA County region where uh, the numbers are higher than other parts of the state. And it's certainly concerning to us here in the city of Long Beach. Uh, we also know that as you look across the country, uh, many states in the country uh, are seeing their infections rise while you have other parts of the state are beginning to see those uh, flatten or decrease in some cases. Uh, and so it's very concerning that the state of California continues to be very challenged uh, with COVID-19. It's not to say that there isn't a really strong effort happening, um, but it's one that clearly uh, needs to be uh, refocused for all of us, uh, and we continue to be committed to um, ending this virus in our community. Want to say um, generally, and I think this is important as we begin to review the data as well, that Long Beach has had the uh, slowest and most cautious reopening schedule of any city or county in the Southern California region. So if you look at us uh, versus the city of Los Angeles or the county or Orange County or, or, or even going down into San Diego and other places, uh, Long Beach has had the most cautious reopening schedule. Um, and it has in some cases been behind a week or two on other uh, reopenings that have happened in other places. Um, yet, even with, uh, with that cautiousness, uh, there, is still, there is still concern uh, for me and for us here locally as we review the data. Let me also just as a reminder, remind folks that the state continues to not permit gatherings. Uh, we know that as the 4th of July uh, nears um, and families and other activities uh, and events like block parties, which usually take place, uh, um, begin to, uh, uh, to get closer to those dates, uh, the, the city of California does not permit gatherings. It only permits gatherings in two, with two exceptions. Uh, one is for um, religious types of events or uh, church services, worship services, um, uh, funerals also, uh, those types of events, it provides some level of gatherings and also for public protests. Why is that the case? It's because those two areas, there are also First Amendment considerations that the state has looked at in those two areas. And so yes, uh, on, in, in the case of some, some types of protests, and yes, in the case of church services and worship services, um, those are uh, permitted and allowed by the state of California. But the state does not allow any other types of gatherings of or large gatherings, whether these are events in hotels, whether these are events on block parties, or whether these are uh, large uh, festivals or gatherings of folks. Um, I understand that some folks uh, want to get their permits from the city uh, for these events. Um, the city can't give permits. No, we're not allowed to by the state of California to give any permits for any gathering, even as it relates right now to the 4th of July. 
And so I know that's disappointing for a lot of folks. Um, and I think what the state is focused on, as we are, is listening to the health and medical professionals and to continue and remain focused on public safety and protecting the most vulnerable. Uh, I want to now go over some of the health data that we have in front of us. Uh, let me begin by going over the first uh, image that we see. Uh, this first image is a slide that indicates the COVID-19 cases by episode date. Uh, as you can see, uh, our, you see our, our, our current trajectory here uh, is not going uh, in the right direction. And in fact, we have seen an increase in our case count for the city. Now, it, while it isn't an enormous spike, uh, it's still a concerning uptick that we have seen even just within a week or two from that case count. This increase can be attributed to a couple factors. Yes, we are testing more and our testing options increase and we understand that. But the reality is that more people are also out in public, which is causing more instances of community spread. We provide COVID-19 testing for all now, whether you have symptoms or not, at our testing locations across the city. And we've conducted nearly 70,000 tests in Long Beach. And as we know, the city provides tests for free, We're not asking for insurance, whether you're documented or not. Please also know that uh, there has been now additional wait time added to testing. Now that we're testing everyone, we're seeing a lot of businesses uh, saying, hey, before folks can come back to work, you gotta, uh, we want all our employees tested, which is a smart thing to do. Um, we're seeing large organizations send all of their folks to our testing sites. So to slow down testing, um, not just here in Long Beach, but across the county, and some of the press has reported on that. And we knew that would happen somewhat with testing, but we want to continue to expand and look at ways to improve that. Let's also talk about this second chart. Uh, the second chart shows you the cases per 100,000 population. Uh, the light blue line uh, represents us Long Beach. We know that we are uh, doing better than uh, the city of Los Angeles and the county from a population perspective from cases, but certainly above the state of California. Our positivity rate has been increasing. And the means, uh, that means a portion of positives on all the people being tested has become higher. Now let's look at our deaths per 100,000. So just to go back a little bit, I think there was a, an audio issue. So I'm just gonna review the, um, the deaths per 100,000. Is that, is that okay, Kevin? Okay. So um, this slide here uh, shows you uh, that uh, overall, um, our deaths per 100,000 obviously are, um, are, doing a, are doing better than the county, but still lag the state. And what I mentioned earlier was that these are, of course, real people. It's hard to quantify someone's life on a chart like this. It's tragic that every single person died. But our fatality rate has remained consistent and is not flattening out in a sense where it's starting to go down. Um, this next chart is our hospitalization chart. And our hospitalization chart... Uh, continues, again, to not see any type of downward trend. Uh, hospitalizations, about 46% of them are associated with long-term care facilities. And our, uh, we've noticed that younger people now are getting hospitalized at a higher rate. And younger people are also uh, asymptomatic. They don't have symptoms and they're passing it on. And so this shows that uh, while there is not an enormous spike here in hospitalizations, um, it certainly isn't in any way going down, and you could argue that um, it is slowly uh, uh, increasing or, or, or ticking in the wrong direction up. And this is something we have to be very, very careful about because hospitalizations can go, can go poorly very quick. And so again, hospitalizations, you see the right there on the chart. Let me show you this next image, and this kind of gives you an idea of our hospital data. Um, our hospital bed usage right now is at 59%, close to 60. That's remained fairly stable. It's gone up just a little bit. Uh, our shirts capacity remains in place. Uh, we have obviously plenty of room. But I, I want to I share, and our ventilator use is still at about 30%. But I want to share something with you that concerns our health department. Uh, you can go from a hospitalization rate of 60 
uh, to 70 or 80 rather quickly, um, particularly if community spread is happening in, in a city. Um, we're getting reports that there are states right now in, in the country that are uh, reaching levels of 90 to 95 percent, and some and in some hospitals, 100 percent hospitalization occupancy. Uh, that is a huge critical danger, and somewhere we do not want to be in California, and certainly not in the city. California hospital occupancy and ICU occupancy is going up. And we heard that earlier today from the governor, and that should concern us here in, in Long Beach. Please remember that um, we don't live in a bubble. People move in and out of our city, whether they live in Orange County or in Long Beach or in LA or other parts of the area. So it's very, very concerning. Want to note that we do have uh, plenty of PPE still in, in our inventory. We've been giving out a lot of PPE to our healthcare facilities and others. Um, but there's still, um, there's always a need uh, for more. Let me turn this over here to our health director who's gonna get into some more details, particularly on our positivity rate that is concerning uh, to her, uh, to me. And, um, and as a reminder, I think we have to remember that the COVID-19 health crisis uh, is not over. And even with, uh, with our cities, a more cautious approach, we have to continue to be um, extra diligent and even more careful. So let me turn this over to Kelly Coffey, who will have more details on the data. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so uh, when we first started all of this, and we started paying attention to whether we, you know, it was time to open, starting to reopen almost anything at a space that was a little bit faster than what the what the state was looking at. So this this conversation about the attestation and the ability to move faster. At that time, um, there were a set of six uh, different indicators. Uh, we looked at shelter capacity, stable hospitalizations, testing positivity rate, testing capacity, hotel surge, and skilled nursing facilities. At that time, when we began uh, reopening, we met all of these criteria. At this time, however, we meet five of the six. Jurisdictions meet the testing positivity rate indicator if the percentage is under 8%. Um, the number is now 8.4%, um, and which is, we're also seeing in uh, LA County as well, is they went from the low sixes, uh, we started at 6.3%, uh, to up over 8%. So we're seeing it uh, more broadly throughout the county as well as in the city of Long Beach. Um, the positivity is one indicator, but does not tell the entire story as what's gone, going on um, for COVID-19 in Long Beach. Uh, the increase is very concerning to us, but it's not unexpected, people are out more. You know, it's, it's, uh, the weather is beautiful. Uh, we've had a lot of people, a lot of things that are opening. Uh, the opportunity uh, in various protests, we had over 60, um, 60 protest opportunities uh, in, the past, in the past three weeks. So people are out. Um, but as the mayor um, you know, mentioned, is that we're really seeing an increase among those who are under the age of 30. So when we, with all this started, those who are under the age of 30 may maybe 15% of the entire population, if that, uh, that were testing positive, now it's almost a third. So almost a third of all of our positive cases are now among people who are under the age of 30, including seeing increases among those ages zero through nine um, and, and 10 through 19. So I think it's really important that we pay attention, pay attention to that. Um, but what we don't see is those, uh, those, the cases from younger folks showing up in the hospitals. So I've talked about this before, is that really hospitalizations is the place that we really focus our attention. Uh, we, if we start to get to a point where our hospitals look like they start reach full capacity uh, or that we're not going to be able to meet through surge capacity, that is a time for which we um, will really need to think about closing things back down. I've been getting that question a lot. Our focus right now is really making sure that people out there are being um, as careful as they can be every day, um, that we are following uh, the face covering rules, all the other pieces. Um, yeah, so what we really know is that um, COVID-19 clearly is continuing and we have to stay vigilant about all that we're doing. So now we look at the stability uh, criteria. So the state has also set out, so they set up the criteria at first that said, okay, you can start reopening. Now they're really paying attention to some of the same criteria, some different, where we say, you know what, this is when you really need to start paying more attention. Uh, those look at the tested population, 
hospital st uh, stable hospitalizations as well. The, f the previous to open was um, stable hospitalizations over five days. Uh, they're now looking at a three-day average, and they want to make sure that it's no more than 10%. We are well below that number. Uh, the testing positivity rate, uh, they still focus at the, minus, at the below 8%, so we're above that. Um, the case rate, so less than 25 total cases per 100,000. That was really set up for rural environments who had very few cases. So it's been sort of a trade-off between what we have in urban jurisdictions, whether you look at that or whether you look at the testing positivity rate. So we focus primarily there as our case rate is, you know, over 100 per um, 100 uh, per 100,000. Our ICU beds, we meet that, and the ventilators, we meet that as well. So we're still doing very well on the stability criteria. We just uh, continue to focus on our uh, positivity rate. So on Monday, um, you know, there's because so many people out, there's such an interest. Businesses want to get back to work. There's just an incredible demand on our testing sites right now. Uh, at this point, all of our test um, sites are full uh, for the next few days. And so we are working to see if we can expand that. But our health officer, Dr. Davis, talked about you know, that, that we're really seeing a lot of employers who believe it's important that we test people before they start. So when you are testing someone before they start, it means that that one minute, they're negative. And so it could be that they're exposed the next day. It could be that if they tested again three days later, they would be positive. So we're really encouraging employees not to use that as a criteria for starting. Um, it is not a practice that we rely on as for the safer at home order. It's not something that we support uh, as public health. It is important um, for everyone to continue to maintain all of the different uh, the different protocols. So, you know, if someone has been in close contact with someone who has um, who has been COVID nineteen and who has been tested, it is important for them to be tested, right? So, if you've been exposed, we do encourage you to get tested. If you have symptoms, we encourage you to get tested. But it's just not necessary for an employee who does not have symptoms or has not been in contact with someone with COVID-19 to, uh, to be tested otherwise. Um, with more people living in their homes, we want to make sure that those who are at highest risk uh, for COVID-19 or for developing severe illness to be prioritized for testing. Um, and that's who uh, is utilizing our appointments. And so we do encourage businesses to be vigilant about their employees wearing face coverings, maintaining your physical distancing, and staying home when they are sick. Um, we want to make sure that they are also really making sure they're sanitizing all the, um, throughout on a regular basis. So although many businesses reopen in most sectors, it's still advisable for employees to work from home when possible to reduce the risk of COVID-19. And I also want to remind everyone that our testing um, sites do require appointments. There are a lot of people who are saying, okay, well, there are no appointments available. I'm just going to walk up. And we've done everything we can to support people who are walking up. Uh, but we are going to have to start turning people away. Uh, the demand on the testing sites, we had over 500 tests given at one of our sites uh, over the weekend. Um, so we really do want to make sure that you are making appointments. We know they're filling up. We ask you to really save uh, your request for appointments uh, if you have been exposed or if you are showing symptoms. Um, it's also really important to let us know if you've made an appointment and you're not going to keep it because then that actually creates opportunity for somebody else to be, to be tested. So we continue to do everything we can to get people in. Uh, if so, and if you're not able to keep your appointment, we ask that you contact us through the public health info line at 562-INFO, otherwise known as 562-4636, so that we can give that slot to other people. Uh, lastly, I just want to remind you that we are um, working uh, within our uh, reconciliation framework, and we are holding a whole set of town halls and listening sessions. Uh, there is a city reconciliation framework and listening session uh, town hall, which is next Tuesday, June 30, uh, at 530. It's an opportunity for you as community members to share your experiences, your feedback, your ideas about inequity and harm caused by racial injustice with your city leadership. You can find more information on Tuesday's session as well as dates and times for additional sessions and transcripts from the town halls uh, that have happened so far at uh, Office of Equity website, which is longbeach.gov forward slash Office of Equity. With that, I'll turn it back to the mayor. Thank you. Okay, now, any questions? Yes, Mayor. We have Maybe a, if there's uh, questions for me, and then we'll give it over to Kelly if there's questions for her. Definitely. First question is for you from Haley at the Press-Telegram. As the statewide hospital, hospitalization rate increases, 
Is there any update the city can provide on the reopening of community hospital? So that's a good question. So um, I think that's obviously we've, we've been wanting community hospital to open now uh, for, I mean, for many weeks and months, it seems like here. Uh, that is something that the a medical group is still working on. I understand that they're still going through the state process to reopen. They have staff in place. They have, I mean, they are doing some work, um, but they are waiting for their final approval through the state uh, licensing process. And so um, uh, absolutely, we want them to reopen as soon as possible. They are set. I heard uh, recently that there's uh, a, a few days ago that they're still working towards reopening soon. Um, but that would be a really a decision the state's got to make about when they reopen. And so we're waiting on that final approval. Thank you, Mary. Next couple questions are for Kelly. Uh, the next question is from Crystal at the Long Beach Post. Kelly, are we seeing delays at the testing sites due to high testing demands? If so, what is the city doing to address this high demand? Uh, we are seeing delays. We're, so, uh, the, as I mentioned, the appointments um, are full at this time acro across our system. Uh, we are working to we are working we are working to open additional capacity um, in, across the different places, as well as um, you know, uh, tr working to take some walk-ups along the way. Though that is really an area that we're trying not to fill up. Um, but we have we are looking for more permanent sites, as well as the ability to expand the lanes within those sites. Uh, the turnaround time for the test, though, remains at about 48 hours. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Kelly at the Long Beach Post. Kelly, go ahead. Okay, I think... Across uh, our system. Uh, we are working to... I think uh, I mean, oh. Kelly had a similar question to Crystal. So I think that uh, question was answered. Okay. All right, now we have a question from social media for Kelly. Can an HOA choose to follow LA County protocol rather than Long Beach related to swimming pool use? No, so any um, anyone who lives, any business that is in the city of Long Beach is required to follow the Long Beach uh, health order. All right, thank you. That finishes questions. Thank you. Now we will have Spanish interpretation. Muy buenas tardes. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy en nuestra sesión informativa del 25 de junio. Uh, comenzamos con nuestros números. Desde hoy uh, han habido 3,509 residentes que han dado positivo por el coronavirus. Aproximadamente 2,565 personas han recuperado. Hemos perdido a 123 residentes de la ciudad de Long Beach y 93 de esos residentes se han uh, sido asociados con centros de enfermería de largo plazo. Queremos um, avisarles que la ciudad de Long Beach, no se, en todo el estado de California, no se permiten reuniones grandes, eventos, um, o oh, reuniones en grupos grandes, especialmente cuando no viven en el mismo hogar. So, con eso... Por, Al caso que el 4 de julio se aproxima el próximo fin de semana, queremos recordarles que cualquier um, espectáculo de, de um, fuegos artificiales no es porque la ciudad no quiere dar permiso, sino es que el Estado no está permitiendo estos eventos. Este, en la ciudad es, you know, ha tomado su tiempo. Nosotros en Long Beach nos hemos tomado nuestro tiempo para reabrir negocios, para reabrir nuestra economía. Hemos tenido mucho cuidado, pero eso está fuera de nuestro control. Esto está controlado por el Estado de California. Solo se permite, por lo tanto, reuniones de estos tipos en grupos para servicios religiosos o por decir por los, los, las uh, protestas que han pasado en las últimas semanas. Vamos a empezar con algunos de nuestros datos sobre um, que le compartimos con ustedes. Saben que hace pocas semanas eh, les dimos un reportaje al principio del mes y ahora queremos seguir dándole unos números importantes. So, el primer, la primera imagen que vieron cuando um, habló el alcalde fue que son los, los casos por fecha del episodio. Las imágenes indicaban los casos del coronavirus por fecha y este, esta semana vimos un aumento de 22% a nuestro recuento de casos para la ciudad actual 
que nos trae al 3,509. La semana pasada, este mismo día, teníamos no, nada más 2,888 casos. So, este aumento puede atribuirse a dos factores principales. El primero es que hay más personas saliendo al público, más personas que están regresando a trabajar. So, eso causa que la propagación de la comunidad um, sea más grande. Y la, la ciudad continúa ampliando pruebas también para los residentes. residentes so, lo que resulta en que entre más personas se hacen una prueba, más personas están teniendo estamos teniendo resultados para más personas. Ofrecemos pruebas gratuitas del coronavirus para todas las personas que sean sintomáticas o no. Y uh, también en nuestras tres nuevas ubicaciones. So, hasta la fecha uh, hemos realizado 70 mil pruebas del virus y recuerden que no se necesita seguro médico para recibir una prueba del coronavirus en nuestros sitios um, alrededor de la ciudad y también no les estamos preguntando su estatus inmigratorio. En la segunda imagen que vimos, continuamos la, viendo la tendencia de casos por cada 100,000 personas en comparación con la ciudad de Los Ángeles y en el condado de Los Ángeles. Eso significa que la parte de los positivos de todas las personas que se están evaluando se ha vuelto más alta. Y las muertes por cada 100,000 personas es, um, nos muestra la, la tercera imagen del coronavirus que está de, debajo de la tasa del condado pero de, de Los Ángeles, pero por encima del nivel estatal. Tenemos aumento en los casos en los últimos días. Nuestra tasa de mortalidad sigue siendo constante en la ciudad de Long Beach. Dicho esto, sentimos los impactos de cada muerte. Levantamos la pérdida de los 123 que han muerto en nuestra ciudad y nuestros pensamientos y oraciones están con todos ellos. Ahora, la, la cuarta imagen nos enseñó hospitalizaciones a largo del, del tiempo. Uh, nos inform, nos, los hospitales nos informan al Departamento de Salud y a la ciudad diariamente. Este, actualmente, casi el 50% de nuestras hospitalizaciones están asociados con los residentes que viven en los centros de atención de enfermería a largo plazo y tienen periodos. Estos, estas uh, personas, pacientes, Desafortunadamente son los que duran un poco más en el hospital, tienen su, sus, uh, los tenemos monitoreados más largo y por muy cerca de todas las tendencias por la vulnerabilidad de su salud y la edad. Este, los datos de hospitales aquí en nuestra ciudad, nuestra capacidad hospital, hospitalaria continúa siendo estable y adecuada. Tenemos un total de casi 1,500 camas de hospital en toda la ciudad y una capacidad de aumento de más uh, de 441 camas. Nuestro uso y la cantidad de ventiladores continúa siendo saludables y como pueden ver en la, en la quinta imagen, nuestras camas de hospital tienen una capacidad del 59% y el 29% de nuestros ventiladores están en uso. Um, también a medida que continuamos reabriendo más nuestra economía y permitiendo más actividades, les haremos, uh, les haremos en función de los datos y el asesoramiento de nuestros expertos de salud. Nuestra directora Kelly Colopy también nos brindó más datos sobre el coronavirus y otros siguientes indico, indicadores que vamos a platicar en estos momentos. Este, la imagen número 6 enseña los criterios actuales de preparación del estado Um, y esos son capacidad de refugio, hospitaliz hospitalizaciones estables, pruebas de tasa de positividad y capacidad de prueba y una oleada hospitalaria. Uh, instalaciones de enfermería especializadas también. En estos momentos estamos cumpliendo cinco de esos seis criterios. Las uh, jurisdicciones pueden cumplir con el indicador de tasa de positividad de prueba si está el porcentaje es el inferior de 8%. Actualmente, nuestra tasa de positividad de pruebas es el 8.4%. La positividad es un indicador, pero no cuenta toda la historia de lo que está sucediendo con el coronavirus en nuestra ciudad. Este aumento es preocupante, no es inesperado, dado a hecho que estamos evaluando a más personas y las personas están fuera y más de lo que estaban hace unas semanas a medida que se está reabriendo uh, más negocios. Este aumento nos recuerda que el coronavirus claramente continúa propagándose en nuestra comunidad y debemos estar atentos a las precauciones que tomamos con nuestras vidas cada, cada día. 
Um, hemos visto un aumento similar en todo el estado y también en todo el condado. La última imagen, la imagen número 7 que vimos, es más los criterios de estabilidad. Es cuanto los criterios de estabilidad estamos cumpliendo todos los indicadores menos dos. Velocidad de casos, este número generalmente se enfoca en áreas um, rurales y no ha sido un foco para nuestra ciudad que nosotros consideramos una ciudad ur urbana. Como mencionamos anteriormente, nuestra tasa de positividad a este momento es 8.4. Uh, Terminamos con unos uh, datos, información sobre nuestros, nuestras pruebas y los sitios de pruebas. Desde el lunes, la doctora Davis habló sobre algunos uh, de estos que estamos viendo nosotros en, en nuestros sitios de prueba. Que algunos de los empleadores están pidiéndole a los empleados que tomen uh, unas pruebas de coronavirus antes de regresar al trabajo. Quiero, queremos reiterar que esta práctica no es indica no se indica en la orden de salud um, o más seguro en, en su hogar de nuestra ciudad. Es importante que las personas que han estado en contacto cercano con alguien que tiene el coronavirus se haga la prueba. So, si ha sido expuesto, sabe de alguien y usted estuvo cerca de alguien que ha sido positivo con el virus, entonces es la manera que debe decir, ok, tengo que hacer una cita para hacerme una prueba. Es importante recordar que si alguien le ha dado un resultado negativo uh, algún día, no significa que no haya estado expu expuesto o que no sea positivo, por decir, unos días después o la próxima semana. Con más personas que abandonan sus hogares, queremos asegurarnos de que las personas con mayor riesgo de contraer el virus o desarrollar enfermedades graves tengan prioridad para las pruebas y que puedan hacer citas. Lo que sí alimentamos a las empresas a hacer es que estén atentos um, a que sus empleados usen sus coberturas faciales, que mantengan el distanciamiento físico y que se queden en casa cuando estén enfermos. También queremos recordarles a todos que nuestros sitios de pruebas requieren citas en estos últimos días. Hemos visto un, muchos, uh, un aumento de personas que están tratando de llegar a los sitios de prueba sin hacer una cita previamente. Y queremos recordarlos, um, vamos a tener que, estamos tratando lo mejor de uh, tomarlos a todos, pero es, no es posible um, aceptar a todos los que llegan sin una cita. So, hemos tenido algunas personas que llegan y desafortunadamente son rechazados tenemos que poner un límite porque tenemos que seguir los horarios de los, de los sitios que tenemos por el personal que está trabajando y los voluntarios que tenemos en esos sitios uh, día a día. Es importante también que si hace una cita y de, por alguna razón no puede um, llegar ese día, que también llame o que deje saber que tiene que cancelar, así le podemos uh, reservar esa cita a otra persona que la necesite. Ha habido una mayor demanda de pruebas en todo el condado durante esta última semana, que ha sido dif dif dificultoso que las personas uh, que están a más riesgo uh, tengan oportunidad de hacer la cita. Si no puede asistir, como le dijimos, puede llamar a la línea de información de salud pública, que es el 562-570-4636, para que podamos um, poner un, a disposición a otra persona. También algunos de los últimos detalles sobre la, los recordatorios de reconciliación. Uh, queremos recordarles que, a todos que sobre el marco de reconciliación de la ciudad y las sesiones que hemos estado teniendo y vamos a seguir teniendo por la semana. La próxima sesión de la alcaldía será el próximo martes 30 de junio a las 5 y media de la noche. Esta es una oportunidad para que como miembros de la comunidad compartan sus experiencias, sus comentarios y sus ideas sobre la inequidad y el daño causado por la injusticia racial con los líderes de la ciudad. Puede encontrar más información sobre la sesión el martes, así como las fechas y horas para las sesiones adicionales y transcripciones de las que ya han pasado. Gracias, uh, muchas, muchas tardes. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy. Es toda la información que tenemos. Um, that is everything we have for today. Thank you for joining us. We will be back next week with the latest updates. Thank you.